The topic of this video is quantitative analysis of heat, work, the change of internal energy, the change of enthalpy of an ideal gas in an adiabatic, as a thermal, as a baric, or as a choric process. So we will fill in the blanks with proper equations for computing delta U, delta H, Q, and W in an isochoric, as a baric, as a thermal, and adiabatic process. In an adiabatic process, P external can be equal to P. It's called reversible. But when P external is different from P, it's called irreversible. Same here. So what about isobaric? In an isobaric process, P external is always equal to P. Just to maintain a constant system pressure, you have to have P external being equal to P. So how about isochoric? In an isochoric process, P external does not matter. It's irrelevant because there's no expansion or compression. Work equals zero anyway, no matter what P external you have. It does not affect your system. All right, and then let's look at the uh, field table. How do you compute delta U? Actually, for all six processes, because U is a state function, and because U only depends on the temperature for an ideal gas, you simply can just integrate CV dt to get delta U. What is CV? CV is the heat capacity of the ideal gas at constant volume condition. How about delta H? There are two different ways to compute delta H. One way is to integrate this CP dt, where CP is the heat capacity at constant pressure condition of the ideal gas. Or you can use the definition of H. H equals U plus PV. Therefore, delta H equals delta U plus the change of PV, which is the change of NRT, which is NR delta T. So there are two different ways to compute delta H. And then you can also compute delta U given delta H. Delta U is delta H minus NR delta T. All right. Again, the reason why delta U and delta H has only one single equation is twofold. Reason one, U and H are state functions. So it doesn't matter what process this ideal gas undergoes, as long as the initial state and the final state are given, we can compute delta U and delta H. So that's the first reason why delta U and delta H can be computed using a single equation. And two, delta U and delta H of an ideal gas only depend on temperature. There's a reason. For ideal gas, the potential energy is zero. Therefore, delta U is the change of kinetic energy, which depends only on temperature. And just for a isochoric process, work equals zero anyway. So delta U equals Q sub V, and Q sub V equals the integral of CV dt. What about some other processes when uh, this uh, volume changes? Well, fine. When you have a process in which the volume of the ideal gas changes, you may always design or imagine a different process, a different two-step process. In the first step, the uh, volume is kept constant. The temperature changes to the final temperature, and then you can use this equation. And then the second step, in the second step, you hold the temperature constant. And if the temperature constant, delta U of the ideal gas is zero anyways. So really, you can just use the equation for delta U in the isochoric process to get the change of internal energy of all other processes if you are dealing with an ideal gas. Same for delta H. How about Q and W? Q and W are so-called path functions. That's why you'll get a different equation for different processes. So first, for isochoric process, it's extremely simple. In an isochoric process, volume is constant. There's no expansion, no compression, work is zero, and delta U equals Q sub V. Therefore, Q sub V equals delta U, and delta U can be computed using the integral of CV dt. How about isobaric process? In an isobaric process, uh, Q sub P is equal to delta H or the integral of CP dt. How about isothermal? In an isothermal process, the internal energy change of the ideal gas is exactly zero 
Again, it's because the potential energy of an ideal gas is always zero. Therefore, the internal energy is equal to its kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. If there's no temperature change, there's no change in kinetic energy. And therefore, there's no change in internal energy. And there's no change in enthalpy because enthalpy equals U plus PV if temperature is constant. U is a constant, and the PV equals MRT is also a constant. Therefore, delta H and delta U will be zero anyways. And also, you can use this equation to see. Uh, this uh, delta U is zero if the change of temperature is zero, delta H is zero if the temperature change is zero. All right, let's look at uh, this uh, adiabatic process. Adiabatic means there's no net heat flow. Q is exactly zero. All right, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, adiabatic means there's no heat flow at all. Now let's look at work. As a caloric, work is zero. As a baric, pressure is a constant. And P external equals P just to maintain a constant system pressure. Therefore, the equation is very simple. It's going to be negative P times the change of volume. And because it's an ideal gas, negative P times delta V equals negative MR delta Q. How about the isothermal process? Again, it depends. The isothermal process can be reversible or irreversible. If it's reversible, P external equals P. So really, you have a negative integral of P dV uh, and uh, uh, P equals nRT over V. So you need to integrate this negative integ inter integrate this negative nRT over V dV. And the integral of nRT over V dV is negative nRT times the logarithm of V final over V initial because temperature is a constant. What if it's an irreversible process? Usually, you will be given a constant external pressure, and then you still integrate this negative P external dV. The result is this negative P external delta V in case this P external is a constant. How about adiabatic process? Because Q is 0, and then W can be easily computed by computing delta U. Delta U is uh, the integral of CVDT. So really, you need to know the temperature change here, and you need to know the heat capacity at constant volume condition of the ideal gas to get W. So what about some other properties? Uh, so over here, isothermal, that means just delta T is zero, delta PV equals zero, delta U and delta H are just zero. Adiabatic reversible, you have this equation. Um, this can be derived by using dW equals dU, and dW equals negative PdV, and dU equals CVDT. And then you can derive from there to get this equation. And how about uh, irreversible condition? For irreversible condition, P external is different from P, so do not use work equals negative PdV. Okay, work is the integral of negative P external dV, dW equals du, dW is negative p external dV, and du is cv dt. So you can use this equation instead, and uh, p external is usually a constant when you are dealing with a irreversible adiabatic process. So over here you have all those equations. Um, these two are uh, grayed out because uh, they are kind of relatively boring as a correct, and then you have uh, this delta v equals zero over here, delta P is zero.